So now I've got the basics down of the gorilla, I'm starting to refine it. So I'm increasing the contrast, so I'll be increasing the lights and the darks, as well as refining those mid-tones as well. So you can see I've got usually two pencils on the go at any time. So I've got a blunt pencil, which I use for, you know, just basic blending techniques. And then I've got a sharp pencil, such as this white one, which I'm using for the fine detail. So I'm just going to continue refining it, going around the canvas here and there. And I'll speed that process up so you can see how this part develops as well. Now I'm starting to darken the areas now. So I'm looking across at my reference a lot and judging what needs to be darker. Remember when I said I'd like to creep up on a drawing or a painting? So I get that mid-tone in and some of the darks and then I start refining. So I'm really punching up those darks again now. Looking at refining the details. So I'm looking at all those different wrinkles and creases. Blending with my finger here and there and keep in the highlights for the last section. So it's a lot of kind of like remodeling now and it's very similar to if you was making something out of clay. So I'm really trying to get the shape and form correct. I'd be using pretty much exactly the same technique if I was using oil paints as well. So, and you can see with charcoal, as I said, it's a quick medium, so things are developing quite fast. And what's good as well is that with charcoal, you can pretty much, with a kneaded eraser, lift a lot of it back on, off. So, it's not so critical that you get it right, it's not definitely going to have to stay there. So, darkening that section around the nose as well. You see how that just that dark mark has made that darker area recess in the in the drawing, which makes the lighter highlighted area pop forward. Just some of those little marks above the lip. It all adds realism, and it doesn't take a long time to do. It's, it's just observing the reference. Yeah, so that's, that's starting to look quite lifelike now. There's still a lot of refinement I want to do and it's important every now and again to stop your drawing, don't go on autopilot and actually study the reference, let your eyes zip from one to the other and that's where you're you know, really estimating what needs to be done. So I've got my General's white charcoal pencil, using my finger as a blending tool because as I said when you use a stump it kind of lifts a lot of the charcoal back off whereas I found with a finger it kind of pushes it around on the paper instead. So I'll just speed this up again so you can see how this develops even further. Now I want to lay down a dark undertone so that I can build up upon that then for the lighter small highlighted haze. So I'm using the charcoal pencil on its side because I don't want to be really digging into the paper at all. You could use a charcoal block or charcoal powder for this but all I really want is to make a dark undertone. So just with painting when you're doing highlights if you haven't got a darker area underneath, then the highlights are not going to show up. So it's critical to get that darker part dark enough. So just refining the top of the head as well. So still keeping the pencil marks going in the fur direction. And I'm going to blend pretty much in the fur direction as well. So when I need it a little bit darker, I push a bit harder on the pencil. And then I've moved the position of my hand because I want to paint in more de or draw in sorry more detail. So I've gone from that sideward motion now 
So I'm blocking in this shape. I'm using the pencil in a, in a regular handheld position. That's giving me the, the access for that detail. Now I wanted to get that shape in first because otherwise those, those transfer lines are really, really faint and I could easily lose a position of that element there. So back to that blocking in and I'll just speed this process up for you as well. And now I'm onto the blending stage. So I've got the stump held on the side and you can see how that's really smoothing all that out and it's, it's really quick to do as well. So critical to use that bit of clean paper under the hand. I don't want to spoil all the work that I've done so far on the drawing. The other critical part is blend in the fur direction pretty much. So you can see how it's, it's given that undertone and obviously it's not completely covering the paper. So the bits that are showing through are looking like under fur. And you can see there where I, I put those darker marks, this gives me a, a darker blend. So I'm going to go over this whole area with the same technique now. Now lots of people find charcoal as a dirty medium. They said they say they can't keep their hands clean, they're smudging everywhere. But the secret to that is, basically I'm working flat here, the secret is to, to keep your hand off of the paper. So either use that white paper underneath that um, scrap paper or just lift your hand off. I'm not rubbing my hand on the surface at all at any point now. So learning to, to do art is all about trying new things out. Okay so don't always be stuck in your ways. Now here I'm using a chamois leather which you'd normally use on a car and I'm using that to blend and, and notice it's smoothing it out in a much softer more even fashion but also it's lifting a lot of the, the charcoal from the paper. Yeah, so I'm, tr I'm trying something new out. If you, so if you want something very soft, very smooth, perhaps human skin, a chamois leather is probably a, a brilliant tool to use. And look how quick it is as well. So it's given me that very subtle um, blended undertone which I can work upon. And it could also be used then, if it does lift a bit of this charcoal, to lighten an area. Now, if I use tissue, that would give me a different effect again. So, so be prepared to try things out in your art. Don't just be stuck in, in a way of, of what someone says. So I've just used that a little bit that's already on there to blend out for a bit of the background as well. So it's, it's lifted off quite a bit of the charcoal. So I want to use that a little bit on the background. I wanted that a little bit lighter and a little bit smoother. So if there's less detail in the background, then the gorilla's detail is going to pop forward. And then this bottom right section is going to be whiter and it's going to be the gorilla's shoulder. So I'll just block that in just to tone that paper down a little bit more as well. Okay, so seeing as it it removed quite a bit of the charcoal. What I'm going to do now is put some more back on. So just as with oil paints, you can work in layers. So you can build upon what you've got underneath. And that's what I like about charcoal and oils. It's, it's kind of like a non-destructive way of creating art. So you can always undo your mistakes. So I'll just speed this up so you can see how I add yet another layer on top. Now unfortunately my camera had stopped while I was creating and building up the fur texture so you're not going to see me build that up and it's jumped forward quite a stage. Now I know you're all thinking I know exactly what he's doing, he's keeping all of the secrets to himself, he's not going to show us how to build up the fur but if you've ever seen any videos from me in the past, you know the whole idea of everything I do is to show you exactly how I create things. I'm not like some other artists who jump these stages deliberately to leave you in the lurch so you don't actually see how it's built up. So once I finished 
um, detail in this section. I'm going to show you the whole of the back side of the head towards our left hand side and I'm going to show you exactly how I create that fur texture so you're not missing out on anything with the technique. It's just unfortunately the camcorder sometimes they knock off when they run out of charge or they run out of hard disk space and I don't always hear the, the very slight warning noise that's given me that, um, that uh, indication. So okay as promised here we go I'm going to block in this back head side of the head creating the dark under layer just like it did on the on the side of the face and this is really quick so it's just showing you it's not speeded up at all this is the actual speed I'm doing it with a pencil held on the side and once I block this section in I'm gonna blend it so the techniques repeat now Obviously, because I'm recording this, I don't want to be moving the paper around. I want you to see as much as possible and to make viewing as easy. So, if I wasn't recording it, very often I'd move my paper around so that the angle is is easier to draw and to lay down the charcoal on. So, if you're if you're doing something similar on your own project, you know, feel free to move the paper around as well. So just that bit on the shoulder, quite a lot of that is going to have long fur on there. And the fur moves in all different directions. So that's why my pencil is moving in different directions now. I'm just darkening a little area here and there as I spot it. Okay, so you just saw how I blended it, added another layer, so blend it again, and now I've got that white pencil and I'm adding that fur, the upper fur on top. Now, as I said, this shoulder area is a little bit tricky because the fur goes in all different directions. And so I'm watching my reference, keeping a look at it, and making sure that I get that in the correct position. Now you can see the beauty and the necessity of the dark underdrawing. So you can see in between the white marks, the under fur, and that's what's creating depth, just as it would be with a painting. So it's not rocket science at all, it's just a technique that anybody can learn, but if that's not there, it's not gonna look right and it's not gonna work. And that's what most beginners struggle with, not going dark enough with the under layer. So just a couple of minutes work there, or minute or so, and that's the, the shoulder pretty much finished. I could have used the, the General's white, I just had the Derwent white there on hand and that's why I picked it up. There's uh, nothing special about it. The only thing I have found is the General charcoal seems to be a little bit harder. So if you want the mark to stay there, the General's is possibly a better choice. With the Derwent it's a, it's a softer charcoal. So that's great if you want it to blend and a lot of people use charcoal they want it to be soft looking and blend so that's when that comes in really handy as well. So being a, a softer charcoal also means that you need to sharpen it a little bit more often. And possibly you can't get a really really pointy sharpness sharp edge to it either so when I did the eyes I picked up the generals and now I want this part of the fur to be a little bit softer so I'm using the duet so there you can see quite clearly exactly how I built up that fur texture on the side of the gorilla's face I told you you wasn't going to be missing out on anything I'm not hiding any of my techniques at all there's no big secret, it's just things you've, you've got to learn and get comfortable with. I've only done a couple of charcoal drawings myself, so obviously I'm learning all the time as well. So I thought it's nice sometimes to actually share with people when you're learning as well, so they can see your mistakes and, and new techniques you discover. So just building up those layers now. Putting that fur on top. 
And the underlayer, I think probably because it's been blended into the surface of the paper, it doesn't really muddy or dirty the white, and the white goes on top, you know, really easily. So in general, just as I do with my oil paintings, and you've seen it probably on those videos, I usually start with the, the fur that's furthest away, and then I overlap the fur that's coming towards us. So that's nearer, so it's actually overlapping just as it would if you could touch the fur and perhaps if you've got a dog or a long haired dog you can brush it forward and see how one hair overlaps onto another. So you can see I'm at the back part there, working forward. You don't always have to do it but in general you're looking really at clumps of fur as well so you can work one section at a time. And I'm going to work over this whole area so you can you can see how that all comes to life. And then what I generally do then, I assess the area that I've done and look for lighter lights and darker darks and just make, you know, just little adjustments here and there and it makes a big difference sometimes. And with charcoal as well, you want a, quite a light touch. You know, you don't want to be pushing and forcing into the paper. It's a really soft medium, just like, just like pastels. So, you know, you want a light touch. You, you're really gliding over the surface. So this area is going to be quite soft at the back of the head. And I'm obviously going to put that bit of background in there as well. So I'm just going to complete this little section. And then hopefully you'll stay tuned and watch part four, which should be coming up in just a few days' time. Really hope you try out this medium. It's really complementary with oils, so any oil painters should find it simple to do. Hope you've enjoyed that video. And if so, I've got lots more on my YouTube channel. And don't forget, the only way not to miss out on any new videos is to click the subscribe button. On my website, I've got full-length feature videos, I've got reference photo CDs and ebooks and also the new Easy Trace Line Art tool. So hope to see you either on my YouTube or my website jasonmorgan.co.uk. See you all again real soon.